Hello everyone. I guess once. Yeah. So let me read something real quick here. This one right here. Okay. Sometimes we get in the way of this simple process. In this way, it's much the same as other aspects of training. If we have a common mistake of thinking of ourselves as the doer or giver of, then we cut ourselves off and others off from it. Simply put, give credit where credit is due. If we put ourselves in the way by taking credit, an attitude that is often innocently fostered and encouraged by others, then our natural connection to the universe is cut. So that comes from Chapter seven, pressing with key, um, Kiatsu Ho, which is the chapter we're covering tonight. And I basically took out any reference to Aikido or Kiatsu from it and just put it, read it just like it was. And I'll read it again. It says, sometimes we get in the way of the simple process. In this way, it's much the same as other aspects of training. If we make the common mistake of thinking of ourselves as the doer or giver of, then we cut ourselves off and others off from it. Simply put, give credit where credit is due. If we put ourselves in the way by taking credit, an attitude that is often innocently fostered and encouraged by others, then our natural connection to the universe is cut. So Curtis Sensei wrote that and put it in chapter seven pressing with key therapy or kiatsu ho. And, uh, you know, there's a, I think it is on the EKF page where Shainer Sensei delves really into kiatsu ho therapy and his practice of it because he had extensive practice with Toy Sensei. Uh, Joni Jackson of our dojo also had extensive training with kiatsu and that was done while she was in Japan. Uh, practicing uh, at the at the Gakuen when she lived there. Um, so it's a part of our training, but not necessarily emphasized that much. Uh, we did a seminar with uh, Shainer Sensei a few years ago, and he taught the whole three-day seminar on Kiatsu Ho. And uh, went right from the book and everything he's had. He created his own little manual on Kiatsu on WordPress that he got basically from uh, headquarters and Toy Sensei. And, uh, you know, Kiatsu's evolved quite a bit since their training. And uh, if you've ever practiced it, you know, you'll know uh, from, you know, what I read, how getting yourself out of the way is the most important part of it. And I also wanted to read uh, a little story that kind of coincides with this. And, and that is, and, and, and I'm not reading it from anywhere, but I'll, I'll tell you because I don't, I can't quite remember who, I think I read the story in one of Ken Wilber's books a while back, a long, long time ago, but I think it's since been in a few others. And it was a group of people that were training uh, at the uh, Zen Center in Mount Baldy. And they were learn. They were being taught. They were being trained by a Tibetan monk, and he was teaching them the art of Tonglen, which is taking and receiving. And that's where you uh, give your positive energy out and take in everyone's bad energy. So the teacher was explaining the process of doing it, and after he ended how to do it, he responded to them with with a question. And he said, "If you could really take away the suffering of everyone in the world." taking all of it into you with a single breath, would you hesitate? So in the midst of everyone, you know, being put on the spot with this question, this one woman in the corner raised her hand and she said, I just want to clarify, you know, some things about this practice. And this is where I'm supposed to give everything good, everything positive out to everyone. And then in return, take everything, everybody's, you know, sickness, illness, negative energy, 
all that stuff into me? And he went, yes. And would you hesitate to do it in one breath? And then she had another question. She goes, I have another question. And he said, well, what's that? And he, she said, what if I get sick? Which really just emphasized, of, you know, her not wanting to, to give out. You know, she didn't want to take in all this negativity that meant she was going to get sick. And, you know, and that's the question everybody in the group said, because when the story was told, the guy said, that's what everybody in the room was thinking. What if I get sick? You know, and, and that has a lot to do because, you know, kiatsu, kiatsu is probably one of the most selfless things you can do. And I remember when Curtis Sensei, I think we were, it was a few years ago, actually more than a few years ago, we were in class and he was talking about kiatsu. And he said, first off, before we talk about kiatsu, has anybody here, when was the last time you offered to give your significant other or your girlfriend or boyfriend or daughter or grandmother or whoever a massage just rub their shoulders without thinking you're going to get anything in return and everybody kind of went nobody raised their hand because you know we're always in this tit for tat thing i'll do this and then i'll get a little good point in that column and then and then they'll have to respond with something and that's kind of how we think of the things and when we interact with people as a exchange basis, I give you something, you give me something. Instead of just giving just to give and receiving just to receive, you know? So, you know, with that being said, you know, that's, that's a lot. I've given you guys a lot to think about, but I'd like to get your thoughts on it. So I'll start with John, since he's in the upper left corner there. John, what do you think of this? being a priest and all. I'm not sure why you had to add that part, but I, I said just like to, <laughs> just like to give you that extra incentive. Go ahead. Well, I have to kind of think about it. I mean, no, 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 there's no thinking. Just, oh, there's just no, what's under oh, right, right. See, I... I, I <laughs> <laughs> Not in that kind of, oh, let me think about it and get back to you, you know? <laughs> when, when the teacher asks a question, you yes. always have to respond with uh, something, especially if it's live. If it's over email, then you can say, oh, let me get back to you on that. But when we're live, John, you have to you kind of come up with the goods instantaneously. Hi, Sensei. You must have some thoughts on this. Well, Sensei, actually, Curtis Sensei asked me to um, do this practice. Oh, but, okay. But actually, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's honest. He asked uh, you to do taking and sending practice, and then you forgot. Yes, yes. Um, actually, um, what, I mean, during that time, I was actually married, and uh, mm -hmm. it was beneficial in the sense of like thinking about um, uh, giving instead of uh, receiving, but take receiving all the negativity and just absorbing it. And it's weird, but um, I think I do that better now <laughs> after I'm separated <laughs> than, than before. And for some reason, I just I, I work through it. Um, and now I do receive all the negativity and then I try to give, and it works best for me. Like it, it, it actually, um, it's given me different insight on how um, to approach things, everything, how to approach everything. Because uh, I used to always um, filter whatever uh, the sensei, or anyone would say to me, like I would translate it in my head and I would be like, oh, this is what they're saying instead of actually listening to what they're, they're saying. And Shinchi Sensei was actually talking about this um, a few days ago. So yeah, 
I thought, oh, what, that's what, what I'm doing. I just basically the uh, you know uh, kind of like shuchu ho, kakudai ho, uh, kakudai ho. Like um, don't just focus on uh, one single thing. Like as if you were taking notes uh, during a seminar. If you take one word, you kind of lose that whole picture of what the sensei is uh, teaching you uh, broadly. And um, yeah, I, it's just something that I constantly think about. I always go back, revert back to myself as being filter, using my filter. But, uh, but uh, recently, yeah, Shinchu Sensei was like, yeah, open, open yourself up and just um, broadly accept it. So I was like, oh yeah, that's, I keep adding that filter, but I need to take it away. I need to just let it all in. So, right. yeah. And in that sense, I should uh, receive, not negativity, but just like try to practice what Sensei has asked me to, to do, <laughs> is receive all the, right. the, uh, the that, not negative, I guess negative energy, and then just project all positive. Maybe, I don't know. I'm always misunderstanding and adding my filter, so, and translating in my head. Sorry, yeah, I just babbled there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, you know, we all, you know, we have these filters in place to, you know, as uh, self-protection. Right. You know, we want to protect ourselves. So we have to be vulnerable. That's what, you know, that was a big part of my practice when I first came to Maui is being vulnerable. I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. I, I equated vulnerability with weakness and there was no way I was going to show weakness. That just wasn't my deal, you know? So uh, then I realized that that's not really being vulnerable, you know? Um, kind of like you're using your filter as a crutch now. So you don't need your filter anymore, but it's just so handy to have, you know? It's just a habit. So the, the key part is you've recognized it. Now the next transition is eliminating it. You know, not so much maybe eliminating it, but realizing it's there and then putting it away. Because it's always going to be with you, but you're going to get rid of it. So you just want to put it aside. You don't need it. Just take it in, John. Take it in. <laughs> okay. Hi. Yeah. Thank you, Sensei. Yeah, that's really good, though. Yeah. How about uh, how about Jan, who's right next to John? Hi, hey, Sensei. Hi, everyone. Um. I thought the first part that you were talking about, you know, getting yourself out of the way was kind of hard enough. And now to add this other layer of taking in <laughs> like other people's. Yeah, that's more advanced practice. I'm not saying you have to do that, but that was just a story that really revealed how we're attached to this, you but, know. Yeah, but I like it. I like it. Um, because I can understand, you know, putting up a filter because at first I was like, oh, whoa. <laughs> but now I feel like I could be more open to it. So I, I really like, I like this. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> um, you know, and the thing of it is, is I know Curtis Sensei said, you don't have to be really pressing on someone to really give them kiatsu in a way. You know, just actually being with somebody 100% is kiatsu, you know. Uh, just hang, I mean, you, I mean, literally hanging out with your, with Curtis Sensei or Suzuki Sensei in the office there was like getting kiatsu for me. I was just absorbed in their, you know, their coqu, their, their little realm uh, in the office and just being present with that, realize, oh, this is a way to be, this is how to be, not necessarily um, I'm going to be exactly like them, but I need to realize that sense of being, you know, being able to just be comfortable hanging out, you know, not needing something or giving something necessarily, just being with them. Yeah. Hello, Phoenix. <laughs> what do you think of all this uh, stuff?
Oh, we're having a hard time hearing you. That would be why. Is that better? Oh, that's better. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I am really familiar with Pema Chodron and kind of that sending and receiving, you know, Tonglen that way. And she starts with the tiniest little things, right? Like smallest things that you would need. You no, know, she just works up. She's always very gentle. I haven't done that necessarily in a while, but I do in my work in particular have a, some of the stuff I do is very contentious, you know, just because we're regular, you know, just the kind of projects we're working on. And so while I'm not like sending and receiving in the, you know, in those meetings so much, I do just try to, when I feel myself reacting or are, you know, wanting to argue with them to just try to just tone my own thinking down not to like make them feel better, but just to sort of like lower the temperature. And then if I do it just for a minute or two, pretty soon it's just there until the next fire starts, so to speak. But it's just, it's like a halfway there, kind of this, a way to just, sometimes I'd like, we'll just look at the person and think about what their family life is like, or, you know, just take them out of this box that I put them in, try to imagine something else about them as a way of kind of tempering my own reaction. But in a sense that it's kindness because I'm not hating them at the moment. <laughs> or, you know, I'm not angry, I don't have that anger. It just tones down my own anger. So I'm just a little bit more able to be able to do what it is I, that it's being called upon at that point. I can see it instead of getting all, it only, you know, it doesn't work all the time, but it's definitely a useful tool. So it kind of along baby steps along what you're talking about, maybe. Right. Yeah, you know, uh, going back to what I read and, you know, getting yourself out of the way is a big part of Kiatsu because, you know, it's not you, even though, you know, it's kind of like you're the vessel. If you're keeping one point and you're mind body coordinated, when you touch someone with Kiatsu, the that unification is going into that basically it's allow it's you connecting physically by touching them and being one you know we do this in aikido practice all the time when we're being attacked we need to be one with them because the you know it's 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 an attacks you know uke nage situation but we're still being the one and then if you translate that to kiatsu it's you and the person that is uh, um, needing something, or you know, their their energy level has, has gone down, or you know, like you you need to infuse the pump, as they say, with water to get more water out of it because it's it's dry. That's kind of the analogy they give with kiatsu. When you're connecting with that person and touching them, um, it's not you, as in you, but it's your the one point. It's your mind body unification you know, allowing them to feel that mind-body unification that maybe they're a little bit off on, you know, and, and, and that helps uh, in two ways. It helps, you know, by you being an empty vessel, so to speak, and just being with them, that helps them recognize one point. That helps them understand mind-body unification, especially if they're training Ikea. Well, no, like if you're doing it, I keep to on somebody that is training, they'll, they'll instantaneously go, oh yeah, that's the feeling. Or, oh yes, I need to, you know, that. Because back in the day, it was very different. I mean, one time I got Kiatsu from, from a teacher on the mainland and it was barbaric. I mean, I was, I felt worse, a little bit worse after, you know, because it was taught so differently back then. And even Suzuki Sensei would say, you know, I mean, there's a picture of him in one of our old, uh, we have a picture in our library of him smoking a cigar on the mat, giving kiatsu to somebody, you know? So that, that just tells you what what the understanding was back then, you know? Uh, you know, uh, I couldn't see anybody smoking a cigar on the mat nowadays. You know, it would be like people go crazy. Can you imagine that? You know, every Suzuki Sensei is extremely revered by everyone. And, and you know, his, his day, is no longer with us. You know, that kind of training is no longer with us. We've evolved from that. But it's always good to look back on it and be fond of it and, and memorize, memorialize it, but it's not something to copy, so to speak. You know, 
I don't want any of you lighting up cigars on the mat trying to give Tiazzi to somebody. It just won't work. <laughs> I mean, it's quite humorous if you think about it. <laughs> if we walked in and saw your teacher smoking a cigar giving Tiazzi, you'd be like, what? Where? What? 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 You know, it's kind of like, you know, in the, in the how things in society were in the 50s and 60s, in the 70s, 80s, 90s. It's so different now. Things are so different. And, and our training has evolved as a result of that, you know, that, that differences that's happened. We've evolved and developed. And uh, Katsu is another thing that's evolved and developed, you know, and to, to get the real goods on Katsu, you really have to study for a long, long period of time. But the teacher knows, you know, uh, because the way they were training back then is not what they're doing now. I can tell you that. So, Kaomi, how are you tonight? What do you think of all this banter back and forth on Kiatsu? Thank you, Sensei. I'm doing well. Hi, everybody. Um, I was always interested in um, healing hands, so I did take mm -hmm. some seminars. So I, I, I know that it has some, I don't know Kiatsu, but I, I did receive Kiatsu. Uh, from Kawabaki Sensei when I had a car accident. It was very helpful. And uh, so I learned uh, ki uh, healing hands. And that one, I wasn't too worried about receiving negativity because it was like almost like you're channeling the uh, nature, key from the nature to the person. And I didn't have to... Uh, it was a practice patient, so I didn't have to have a real uh, person with uh, sickness. Uh, but it, if someone asks me if I'm willing to take all the negativities from the other person, I, to be honest, I would be <laughs> quite hesitant because <laughs> I, I'm very, <laughs> very, um, I'm very sensitive to people's energy I, I feel it someone is sick and heavy or uh, someone is happy I, I, I feel it and it it affects me and uh, I I would like to know how to um, maybe protect it so I think keeping one point might be one of the ways but I haven't uh, quite learned so I'm not confident if I could do it um, one time I uh, went to trip to China with my school from my school and uh, there was a man selling the you know do you call a seal like a hanko seal like someone's name and he wanted to sell it so I went there and he said you have you have a really bad luck as soon as I walked here, so you have very bad luck. And if you don't buy this seal, it's not going to be very good. So I, I was like, oh, my goodness. I, I just, you know, tried to listen to what he has to say. And then he took my hand and he did something with it. And just immediately I felt really, really sick. I have never felt like that before, but I didn't buy any seal from him. So I think he he didn't uh, take it out, whatever he put in. I really felt he put something into my body. And I just, I couldn't even sit in the bus on the way. So it took me a long time to recover from it. So I I just know that there is something like negativity can be transferred if you know, the person has a bad intention, maybe he's upset, I didn't buy a seal, but I wouldn't want to feel that way, you know, so <laughs> that's why I have like, I think extra fear, uh, but I think I understand the kiatsu is like, you are basically your channel, right? You have this universe uh, helping you and maybe, yeah, it's something I, I have to learn. I can relate to this life coaching. I'm a life coach. And when I have a client, I don't touch them, of course, but uh, I listen to them. Uh, and uh, I remove all the judgment because I, I want to help them. 
and I remove all my agenda and I just uh, pray, you know, I can be a channel for this person so that whatever the space uh, we are creating by listening in very deeply, please have this person come have some uh, peace and uh, some answers. And usually I don't really do too much, but I think it's a, it's, it's a space that uh, allowed uh, between us. Uh, at the end of the session, uh, a lot of times the clients feel better or they come up with uh, uh, their own solutions. And they say, what did you do to me? I feel better. But I, my answer is honestly, I didn't do anything. I was just listening to you. And then it's just allow the space for you. So you came up your, with your own answer. So I feel like I'm just like a channel, you know? I, 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 I don't really do anything. So that's probably, yeah, it came up to me when I was listening to you, your story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So a, a couple of questions. Yes. So first off, listening, if you really are 100% listening, that's a form of piazza in a sense, you know, yes. getting out yourself out of the way mm -hmm. and actually mm -hmm. listening to somebody without thinking about what you're going to say next or judging them or coming up with an answer or solving a problem, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing I want to ask you is you said that you felt like that person put negative energy into you and it took you a long time to rid yourself of it like what changed recovery. yeah what changed in your recovery uh, at that time i think it just took i think time helped me <laughs> but uh, it's really nothing <laughs> I, I, maybe if it, i it's now i might say maybe i could breathe or something but at that time i had no idea so i was just lying down on the uh the seat in the bus and people are saying what's happening to you but I just I was so drained and it's just time and nothing I did not know any better I think your mind changed I think so I hope so, I think so. Yeah. because if you get stuck on something you can you can make yourself sick hmm. your mind is super super powerful and, you know, there, you know, if you read anything about Kiatsu, it always talks about, you know, you have to be, you know, you have to be in good health to give Kiatsu. You have to, you know, sleep right, have the right diet, you know, be healthy. You can't be sickly and be giving Kiatsu. You've got to be healthy. And, and people don't realize how your physical mindset, your mindset, your physicality, all that. Uh, has a lot to do with how you feel. You know, if you don't get a good night's sleep, you're not going to feel good the next day. You know, you can power through it a couple days, but after after a few weeks of bad sleep, you're going to be feeling awfully run down. And that's you'll be the one needing kiatsu. You know, so you know he he affected your mindset so much that it it really overwhelmed you. I think you were just overwhelmed. Just physically, I felt it. Maybe the mind yeah. has such yeah. a power. Too. Well, mind leads the body. You know, the mind can really have a power over your how you feel. Definitely. You know. Well, thank you for that thank sharing. That's, that's always good. Yeah, the, the the interesting factor of kiatsu is is you know, of course, we want to be able to provide that in our training but i would say you know get the proper training first because cats do such an in-depth art in itself and it's a worthy art to practice and it's it's really a selfless act that you really have to put your whole mind and body in and you can't have any inkling of yourself in in it you know you have to really let go really be step away to be able to provide an honest and true response to 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 somebody that's requiring kiatsu hi gloria what do you think of this discussion 
Good evening, Sensei. Uh, very interesting. Uh, I was going to say to uh, Kiyomi that a friend of mine that I was visiting on Maui when we had a seminar there, <clears throat> she said that a friend, someone had, uh, a friend had sent her something that was really kind of negative. And so she <laughs> responded to the friend, you know, I'm just all full up, so I'm sending it back to you. <laughs> so <laughs> you might remember that when something like that happens. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I, I was um, actually really privileged to study uh, Kiatsu for four years with Gene Naipo Sensei. And I don't think you ever met him because he was years ago and he went off with the, the Aloha group whenever there was the big split um, in the Hawaii Key Federation or whatever it was called at the time. And, um, you know, and of course the technique was different. It was, it was very different, but I, you know, I learned all the lines and everything. But one thing that, that was very clearly articulated was that you, it's not, you're not putting your energy or your key into another person. You're simply allowing the key of the universe to, to go through you. And that's why key uh, meditation, uh, uh, key breathing and meditation are so important because uh, you get in touch with your one point with the flow of key and then can use that with other people. And I have uh, helped some people with, with Kiatsu when it comes up. Uh, years ago, my mother had a mastectomy and had the usual kind of swollen arm you know, left over from that. And so uh, I was visiting uh, after that she had had that and just did a little Kiatsu on her arm. And the next morning she got up and said that it felt much better. You know, so it is true, you sit and you simply focus on the other person. Uh, and as we, uh, I would have to say Boyer since I would be horrified if I saw Boyer since with a cigar in his mouth, because that's not, <laughs> not my sensei. <laughs> Anywhere, so certainly not on the mat. Uh, but uh, what we've done lately is not even so much, you know, you, you find a point that can use some uh, key energy and then he says, melt. And that somehow just takes the urge to press, you know, to do something yourself. And you, when you melt into that, you just have to let everything go and let the energy flow through. Uh, so it, it's, it's probably some of the best training in being selfless that I think I've ever done. Uh, and it's not necessarily taught that way, but that it, that is the way that it that it goes. Uh, and I have to one uh, incident that I had was uh, a few days before a test. I was doing something in a filing cabinet, and it started tipping over toward me. So of course I pushed it back, and and in the process, this arm was just really sore. And I said to Naipo Sensei that morning, I, I have a test, and I don't think I'm going to be able. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to take the test. So he worked on my arm, and I took the test. And then two days later, the pain was totally, completely gone. And it was remarkable, you know, because it really hurt when I did that. I, I strained something, but just that, uh, you know, and Curtis Sensei has this story of when he hurt something, he, he told uh, Tohei Sensei. And uh, Tohei Sensei started pressing. He said, ow, Sensei, that really hurts. And he said, well, do you want to uh, practice in three months, six months or today or six weeks or whatever it was or today? <laughs> <laughs> and so he said, okay, do it. <laughs> so occasionally it hurts. It just depends on what it is you're dealing with. Yeah. Right, right. I get it. Yeah, that's a good story, Curtis Sensei tells. That was during a Rondori. He was doing a Rondori with Toy Sensei and, of course, was in, not that he would ever show off, but he was probably showing off when he was taking a role and he injured himself. And, of course... He had the rest of the seminar to take, and here he's got a bum shoulder now as a result of this. So we kind of got Toy Sensei to work on him, and he said he buried, his, you know, how we're we supposed to touch light. He buried his whole thumb, like up to here, in his shoulder, and he was like, ah, you know, it was really painful. And of course, he said, "Do you want to practice now, or do you want to wait six months?" <laughs> and so that was uh, that was his experience with Toy Sensei and and uh, Kiatsu. And there was other stories about Suzuki Sensei. You know, he was a rough, rough, rough bugger when it comes to pressing on people, and and uh, and that's just the way they trained back then. And it's so different now. Alaria Sensei, uh, your Sensei said she couldn't be here tonight, so she said, "Tell Alaria to take it, take everything you know that I would say, and 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 
fill in. Fill in. I have no idea what Piva Sensei would say. <laughs> I know. I'm just teasing you. No, she emailed me a very nice email and said she couldn't make it tonight. Um, and I said, oh, I'm going to tease Laria with that. How can I do that? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I've never heard of the practice of giving out positivity and receiving all negativity. And so when that came up, I was just kind of to, kind of listening to everyone's input about it. Because um, my thought was, I, my first thought was like, I wouldn't just get sick. If I, if I received everyone's suffering in the world, I would simultaneously implode. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was kind of thinking like, like Gloria was saying, and in, in Kiatsu, you're a vessel for the key of the universe. And so if you're giving positivity, it's the universal key, which must mean that if you're also receiving negativity, then it doesn't affect you because you're just the vessel. And I exactly. think that I think that when we're in our small minds, um I lost it. <laughs> When we're in our small minds, uh, if something negative happens to us, like if someone if someone comes at us with something, says mean things, our filter does more harm when we overthink and process it and take offense and all this stuff. So in a way, like that's just kind of what I what I saw with it. I also have a question about the manual. Could I ask it? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, I have the, I just got the fourth edition. I ordered it. And under testing key, this is chapter three. I noticed, mm -hmm. so the five principles of one point on page 19, it said, um, A, a posture in which you do not focus on the lower abdomen C, a posture in which you don't notice your breath. And then page 27, five principles of key extending was similar. Um, it says a posture in which you do not pay attention to your body. And th these principles are very new to me um, in not noticing and not paying attention. And I don't understand. <laughs> so could you explain that? Better yet. What I think would be best is for you to go over there. You just got the manual today or when, this week? You just got it? Yeah, the other day. Okay. I would go through it a few more months and try to solve that question on your own. Okay. If you need hints, you could probably go back to one of the classes I taught on. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and maybe re-listen to it and maybe you'll get a different perspective of it but uh that's something that i think for me just to give you answers and suggestions really won't do any good you need to discover hi okay thank you sensei yeah and you're spot on with what you were saying is that you know with the with the tongue practice the, the question is kind of a trick question would you hesitate to do it well of course because it's not you that's doing it you know, you're not giving away positive energy and taking in the negative. You're just the vessel for the one point, you know, passing through. It's that, it's that, uh, as uh, Curtis and say likes to say, the uh, uh, the point, the, the, he drew this triangle upside down. He said, this is the point of where the one point goes and transitions to the universe. It's like a melting pot. Your one point's a melting pot. You know, Toy Sensei always used to say that. It's infinite. Your one point's infinite. So, you know, when you're just, you're the just best the universe, it, it just goes back and forth, you know? It's like a swinging door, as I said once before, when, when quoting Suzuki Roshi, you know? It's not, you're not getting stuck on anything uh, like that. It's not you that's doing the anything. So, good point. Vitaly, you're here. Yes, I'm saying. Uh, yeah, does this make any sense to you? Are you enjoying this this discussion? Yeah, 
Um, first of all, uh, what about uh, giving a positive and receiving ne negative energy? Um, I, um, I don't think that uh, when you receive negative energy, it uh, can harm you somehow. Uh, just, uh, just because uh, the uh, experience when I practiced Kyatsu with uh, someone, um, I, I have, um, um, uh, I have told by uh, the person who received Kyatsu that uh, it feel much better after after a procedure. But I don't feel worse myself. <laughs> I, I do. I did something, but I, it uh, it did not harm me anyway. So it's it, 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 because of this experience, I don't afraid to <laughs> receive some negative energy from uh, someone uh, uh, who. Uh, for, for someone with uh, uh, whom I uh, I do kiasu, <laughs> uh, it, it's what about uh, energy, positive and negative. But I have uh, a question to say about uh, kiasu, about the way we do kiasu. Mm -hmm. um, when I practice, I work with some uh, zone of pain of uh, some person. I touch the zone, uh, some zone, and I try to to help uh, to that zone. For example, to arm, to back, to leg, or uh, some zone. I, I, I touch the the problem zone. Uh, but Kurti um, uh, Sensei and you Sensei. Uh, Told us that Gyatso is just be uh, uh, near the person and just connect them without touching. Uh, but uh, we don't know with uh, what problem we work, isn't isn't it? And uh, how um, could you? It, Explain what is Kiatsu. Uh, we um, work with the whole person or we work with problem zone? Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I, I see what you're saying, and I think, and I will say this much. So, you know, there is a book, it's called Kiatsu, that Toysen Sensei wrote, and that has the basic fundamentals of Kiatsu. So the most important thing, like when you're learning Kiatsu, of course, is mind-body unification, breathing, meditation, right? So that's the basics. You got to have the basic foundation. The other basic foundation that you have to know, and I think uh, Gloria touched on this a little bit when she took training with Kiatsu with that teacher, is you got to know the lines. Everybody, the lines that are written in the book, you know? And then for you, okay, so... We're talking, there's levels and then there's levels of Kiatsu. And what I, Curtis Sensei, I believe, was talking about, what I was kind of touching on was the subtle level, the subtle le levels of Kiatsu, which is being with the person, helping them keep one point, helping them connect. By you connecting with them, they can get an understanding of one point. But of course, you said there's, of course, then you get people that are actually injured, you know, um, and you were saying, you know, I would say this much, you know, be really careful when dealing with somebody that has an injury. And the reason why is because we're not professionals in, in, in the medical field here, you know, we're not, we're, we're, we're basically hobbyists we have you know we're, we're so-called we have a hobby and a part of that hobby is kiatsu in a sense i'm, I'm just taking a rudimentary here, here if you have trained in kiatsu and you know the lines you have a chance to help them 
physically. But mind leads body. So I would say we need to help them mentally first and physically second. So I wouldn't go near the spot that's injured on them without knowing exactly what I was doing. But I would help them through, you know, a lot, you know, when people are in pain or suffering, there's, you know, there's, there's mental pain, there's physical pain, there's emotional pain, there's people manifest pain in a variety of ways. So you need to be with that person, connect with that person. So just by being able to connect with them, you'll know what to do. That makes sense. Uh, that yes yes thank you sensei okay no problem uh, i know we have a few people that are i know fincher's busy he's traveling getting ready to travel um so he probably doesn't want to talk but lucky or charlotte uh who don't have your video up you can ah here you go uh that would be charlotte how are you Um, hi. Oh. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, could you, I, you stand I, by, uh, Lucky? Could you stand by, Lucky? Uh, Charlotte oh. is. Go ahead, Charlotte. You're unmuted. Good morning. It's really Good early morning. there. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. I am a bit. <laughs> wake up now. <laughs> I stopped too. But I'm still a bit slow. That's um, okay. Yes. We do very small kiatsu in, in our training. Just very, 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 very few. I get a bit of experience from another field, which to me seems very similar. So uh, somehow it's, of course, different some type of shiatsu that I did for some, some time, for some, yes. And um, what I took from there is to listen, not to do anything, to give anything, take anything, but just to listen to what uh, person that you are working with, ho however you do it, is uh, showing to you. To be able to listen, you have to be open. So it's to be open and then to listen. And uh, what I learned there is not even to work on the person, to press on it, but that it should be more than uh, leaning on each other, which is taking contact to each other. So, um, yes, the surface is completely different, but I always feel that is just the base of Kiatsu as well. Just to, to be open, to listen, and uh, to be in contact. And like that, just to uh, allow energy to, to do its work, however, it happens, whatever. Yes, and you can do it by listening, just being present, and you can do it by maybe touching. And what I learned is also just to, to point out that, to, to, to underline that point. Um, when people, maybe one person, one friend, experience that you could really help her. Then it can happen that they uh, tell others and you have to be very careful because then it can happen that somebody who is sick comes and also they have filters and they, in what they see, what they experience and they may tell you, oh, my legs are just a bit uh, tired. And then afterwards you learn, 
she was really sick. She had to go to the doctor, but she was afraid. And it, if you are not very careful at that point, it can even put you into danger. So uh, I'm very careful, and I, I after some experience of that experience of that kind, I really lean back. I I didn't do it. I kept off. I, I I noticed I have to learn a lot before I want to enter there. When uh, there's somebody I know, she is uh, she's healthy at least to a certain point. She has no injury. I I, I can do it. Uh, in uh, Aikido training, where I know I've been with the people, I can do whatever, no problem. But uh, somebody where I'm not sure that she is not uh, healthy enough for me as somebody who is not medical, uh, I would never do it. I would listen to it, to, to the person I can touch slightly, very carefully on a point where I know there's no problem that I can do, but I'm very careful to that point. But okay, it, it seems to me it is very similar, at least from the boy, from, from the base, how you touch, what you do is very different, but from 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 the from the base it seems very Always, that is what I understand without ever doing kiatsu or just very few kiatsu. It seems to me it is very similar, at least. I don't know. Okay. Well, thanks for sharing. And yeah, you touched on a lot of things there. And one of the things I know it goes back to where John was discussing about, uh, you know, just getting out of the way uh, and, and uh, you know, when it's it, it kind of goes back to the basics of meditation and breathing and you know and being able to connect getting out of the way you know those simple practices and and that you know kiatsu is just another form of training key training in a sense and and the, you know what we have in our manual is a very simplistic and basic understanding of it and, and of course with anything that we are doing here you can go there are levels and levels of training and we have to be aware of our limitations you know uh i wouldn't read our chapter seven on kiatsu and think that i can open up a, a shop and start giving kiatsu to people you know but what this what this is for it's it's to expose you to, oh, this is the fundamentals of Kiatsu training. Does it spark an interest with you? If it does, then there's further advanced training you can do to, to, to enhance your training. Uh, but the fundamentals, the basics of it is, you know, keeping one point, connecting with other people. You know, the way we practice it in the dojo is, you know, I'll go, oh yeah, I've got a sore shoulder. Can you push on it? You know, and people will come over and push on it and say, oh, I'm giving you kiatsu. And yeah, maybe it is, maybe it's not. But you know, when when we have a kiatsu discussion in Maui, it's taught by Joni Jackson sensei or Curtis sensei because they've had the most exposure of kiatsu. I would not put myself out and teach a kiatsu class because I haven't been trained well enough to do that. I can give you basics, basic understandings and, and fundamental exercises, but I can't really, you know, teach you the lines and et cetera, just because I have not been trained that well, you know? So you, you make very good points in, in your discussion there, Charlotte. I appreciate that. Um, we had somebody else lucky, I think it was, right? you had wanted to talk yes so i was just going to say that i don't have uh, too much to say about this i have the one of the first few times i was taught about uh kiatsu was in a seminar in hilo that uh, where everybody was uh, uh given directions on how to uh, try it on a partner and <laughs> i just remember uh, really not being sure 
at all the entire time. If I was doing it the whole time, I was just like second guessing myself, like, oh, is this it? Oh, is it supposed to do it like this? Which I think thinking goes in my head instead of just uh, letting go and. Dang it. You're a little bit broken up, but I think I get the gist of what you're saying is that you were practiced in Hilo and it was challenging because you were not quite understanding if you were doing it right, it was new to you. And of course, like anything else, when we're exposed to it for the first time, we are definitely not in, we are not definitely, we are definitely not out of the way. We are completely in our own way because we're trying to figure out in our brain what to do. And that's with everything, whether it be techniques, you know, breathing practice, meditation practice, or kiatsu practice. So I know, I know exactly where you're coming from because I have also been in the same boat. Um, I think we've covered everyone. And I do have something else to read at the for closing here. Let me bring it up. Where did it go? Let's see here. Oh, here it is. Okay. <clears throat> this is a quote from a book by a Vipassana teacher. It says, no matter how much you meditate, even if practice formally for two hours a day, most of your life will be spent between sessions of meditation. So it is your life that really matters. And the boundary between formal practice and the rest of life is artificially in any case. It is just an idea. The truth, it only exists if you think it does. It's much better to use every moment to wake up. Every moment is an opportunity to recognize the true character of conscious experience, to break the spell of identification with thought. Whatever you are about to do, whatever happens next, simply recognize consciousness in its contents. If you find that difficult or you are not sure you're doing it correctly, uh, that is the doubt you need to resolve through formal practice so that in this moment you can recognize the openness and clarity of your mind without any doubt. You need to practice to the point where in this moment you can see that you are already free. So with that, have a good Thanksgiving. I won't see you uh, until after Thanksgiving. Uh, Carlos Boyer Sensei will teach a Wednesday class and then Curtis Sensei will be back online Friday and Sunday. So I hope to see you then and have a good, uh, good rest of the week. Thank you all.